Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. In today's training tutorial, we're going to discuss some new orthodontics aligner features and functionalities that we have in our latest release of Blue Sky Plan, including what we see now on the screen, which is completely automatic annotation, where the software is completely automatically marking two dots on each tooth and identifying which tooth is which. In addition, later in this tutorial, we're going to discuss some new tooth control functionality that we have, including the ability to duplicate a particular step in the aligner sequence, so you could have complete control over which teeth move next in the next step. In addition, in this release as well, we've added the ability to add a CT scan to your aligner digital treatment plan. The software automatically segments the teeth from the CT scan and automatically aligns them to the teeth in the STL models. So you see the full tooth with the root aligned to each tooth from the STL model. It's part of the digital treatment plan. And as you move the teeth, you'll see how it affects the root movements as well. And as I mentioned, the segmentation from the CT scan is completely automatic and the alignment to the teeth from the STL models is completely automatic as well. This is the topic for a different training tutorial already available and we're not going to get into the details of this in today's tutorial. In addition, of course, we encourage in-house digital treatment planning for aligners as well as in-house aligner manufacturing as that's the best way to control costs and control the turnaround time. But if you do want help with the digital treatment plan or with the digital treatment plan and the manufacturing of the aligners, we have some great offers on Lab Pronto. You could have the digital treatment plan prepared with the segmentation, the digital tooth setup, everything connected to that for $49 for the entire case. And if you also want to have the aligners manufactured, then we have a package for complete clear aligners that includes the digital treatment plan and the manufacturing of the aligners. For small cases of up to 24 total aligners, the price is $4.99. And for a larger case of up to 80 total aligners, the price is $7.99. The vast majority of cases fall into one of these two categories. If it's a super large case, then we have unlimited aligners for $9.99. And again, this includes the digital treatment plan as well as manufacturing the aligners. Both of these services are available via Lab Pronto. Click Orthodontics Aligners from the homepage and you'll be able to order these services. Okay, so now let's take a look at these features and functionalities directly in Blue Sky Plan. So I'm going to start by clicking on orthodontics, aligners, and import models. I'm going to select the relevant models. I'll multi-select by holding down the shift key and left clicking once on each model and then clicking OK. OK, the software shows us the first model, asks for identification. We're going to click on maxilla and we have our models imported. I'm going to add a patient name, sky blue, and continue to draw alignment. What's running now on the screen is the automatic deep learning annotation of the teeth. The completely automatic result of this process is the annotation of two dots on each tooth as well as the identification of the relevant teeth. You can make any tweaks necessary just by grabbing and dragging any of the dots. And if for whatever reason you need to manually identify and you have the functionality similar to what we've had in past versions to go ahead and mark the teeth manually. I'm now going to click continue with mandible. Once again, we have the completely automatic annotation. You can fine tune the placement of any of these nodes as needed, and then click Continue to Teeth Segmentation. Okay, we get to the next step with the models closed, and we have all sorts of settings where you could decide on the height of the base and the distance from the gingiva margin and all sorts of other things. That's in the properties. But we get to the step where the models have been closed and the teeth have been automatically segmented. And we could see the improved segmentation that we have going on here, connected them based on the improved deep learning annotation. 
If you need to fine tune any of these segmentation curves, simply click, left click on the relevant tooth and go ahead and grab and drag or redraw as we've done in past versions if necessary. I'm going to now click continue with mandible. And here, once again, we see our completely automatic segmented teeth. I'm going to click continue to model trimming. And the software has automatically drawn a trim curve, meaning that anything that's outside the trim curve will automatically be removed and cleaned up. If we want to fine tune the trim curve, simply grab and drag any of the nodes to fine tune the placement of the trim curve. I'm going to click continue with mandible. Once again, we can review the trim curve and click continue to teeth moving. The software will now trim away everything outside of the trim curve, leaving us just with the gingiva and the teeth. So while this is processing, I'll just comment that if you do come across any case where the automatic annotation or segmentation of the teeth is not good for whatever reason, then you could help us. You could help us simply by sending us the case plan at blueskybio.com or just send us the STL models and we'll be able to use that data set to help teach the software and help to continually improve the software for future cases to get that perfect result for the annotation and the segmentation. Okay, so we're at the point of creating the digital tooth setup. We could see that we've improved the rendering of the gingiva, both at this stage and also as the teeth move. Clicking on any individual tooth shows the widget with the midline of the tooth. If the midline needs to be adjusted, simply click refine midline, reposition using the widget, and then unclick refine midline. You could get an initial digital tooth setup simply by selecting the relevant jaw and clicking snap all teeth. We can see that the teeth have been snapped based on this curve. If we want to modify the curve, we could click show opposing arch first of all to remove the opposing arch and then we could click edit curve and here we have the ability to change the height to change the rotation and if we want a more narrow curve or a different shaped curve then we could just go ahead and grab those notes we have a checkbox here to move, move points symmetrically so you could keep that checked if you like and after you've made any modifications to the curve you could turn off at a curve and then snap all teeth to that curve you could repeat the process as well for the posing arch I'll go ahead and snap the teeth here. Okay, and for our demonstration purposes, we could say that that's sufficient. We also have improved collisions functionality that's showing the collisions between the teeth in real time. So you could go ahead and visualize collisions just by checking the collisions checkbox. Just to point out, we've moved some of the specific tooth functionality to the right click on the tooth. So if you want to switch to torque then just simply right click and choose switch to torque. If you want to show virtual tooth, which is not what I was discussing earlier, what I was discussing earlier is completely CT automatic tooth segmentation that's aligned and you'll visualize the patient's real teeth. But since we haven't imported a CT into this case, or if you don't have a CT and you still want to have some sort of estimation or visualization of how the particular tooth with the root would look, then you could just right click as I did and choose show virtual tooth or now hide virtual tooth. Okay, continuing with the process flow and discussing new functionality. For our demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave the setup as is and I'm going to click continue to edit steps. Now what we could see here, first of all, is we have the slider of course showing us the teeth movement on each step. We've added visualization of green when the tooth is actually moving. So if you click on a particular tooth, then you'll have highlighted in green the steps for which that particular tooth is moving. Here we have our control panel essentially of the ability to create modifications 
of how our teeth should be moving and in what sequence. So if we're completely satisfied with how the software has created the steps and how we're going from beginning to end, then we could keep everything the way that it is and just click continue to export. We also have the drop down here where we could control the teeth that move the least. And if it only needs one or two steps to move, should that teeth and those steps happen at the beginning? Should least movement move first or least movement move last? So you're able to select the relevant option and the sequence will be recalculated. We have, as we've had in the past versions, the star step column and the mandatory column. This start step column is if you want to force a particular tooth to only start moving at a particular step, then just select the relevant checkbox. And if you want to put a particular tooth in a particular position for a particular step, then you'll have the mandatory. So you could go to the relevant step in the process, for example. And if we want to decide now that this tooth at step number three should be in a more improved position, for example, we could go ahead and make the modification directly for the tooth. That tooth becomes mandatory in this position at this step, and that's indicated with the mandatory checkbox being checked. After making a modification to the teeth movements and the steps, you should click Refresh Steps so that the software updates based on these modifications and it updates the sequence and the steps and the tooth movement based on that sequence. What we have here, the double circled arrows will restore the tooth movement sequence to the suggestion of the software. Change of steps plan will reset all changes made in table of steps to wish to continue. So if, for example, if you start making modifications and then you realize that you okay, you want to get back to the original suggestion of the software, then you'll use that button. Once you make modifications to the start step or the mandatory, simply click on refresh steps. So in our situation, for example, if we have a prob problematic IPR at a particular step for a particular tooth, we could click, we could activate that tooth at the particular step, make the relevant modification that we want to be making. And now the tooth has become mandatory in this new positioning that we just set at step number seven. So we dealt with the IPR issue. We could click refresh steps and the software will recalculate based on that. If we have a more extreme situation such as round tripping and we've expanded the arch and now we want to go ahead, let's say, and contract the anterior teeth, what we could do is we could use the duplicate step function. So we could click on the relevant step. Let's turn off refresh steps, click on the relevant step, and then click on duplicate step. So right now we've added an additional step, and right now there's no tooth movement between seven and eight. But if we want to go ahead and activate step eight, and for step eight, go ahead and let's say contract the arch of the anterior teeth. So we go ahead and move the particular teeth. Now the rest of the teeth are in the exact same positioning as the previous step. But what this is allowing us to do is to dictate what is moving next into what positioning. And based on only the teeth that we're making changes to. Once we finished making changes to those particular teeth, we could go click on refresh steps. Again, the software will take that into consideration. And this allows us to dictate to the software what should happen next after a particular existing step by duplicating the existing step and then moving the positioning of just the selected relevant teeth into their new position. So just to summarize before we go on, if you are happy with the tooth movement sequence that the software is proposing to get from the beginning to the end, then you don't have to make any changes regarding the tooth movement sequences. But if there's an IPR issue or if you want to customize particular situations, then you have the tools to use the start step to dictate at which step the tooth should start moving. You have the mandatory step where you could decide that for a particular tooth at a particular step, the tooth should be required to be there. You have the drop down for the steps plan where you could decide that if the teeth moving least should move at the beginning of the movements 
or they should move at the end of the movements. And then you have the duplicate step option where you could duplicate an existing step. The teeth, when you duplicate the step, are all in exactly the same position. And then you could go ahead and make modifications to the teeth that you want moving next to a particular position. After you make modifications to the start step or the mandatory or the duplicate step, then go ahead and click on refresh steps. A final uh, point before we go on, you could click on step details. That shows you for each tooth what the movement was for a particular step and what kind of movement there existed. And if you want to, if you want to change the limits of how much a tooth can move in a particular step or how much it can rotate in a particular step, we have that capability as well. When I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial video, but that's under tools and options. Okay, so now we could proceed and decide how we want to proceed. If we want to simply export the models for liners, we could just click that radio button and then continue to export. If we want to design printable liners, which is becoming more and more relevant, then we could go ahead and click on that, which is also a topic for another video and that will have an additional step where we could actually design our printable liners. And we have the option to design a learner to design a liner trim curve, which is also a topic for another video, that if you want to use a mill to automatically trim your liners, then you could go ahead and export a trim curve as well. That goes to the mill for the instructions regarding that. If you want to add buttons for the case, we have automatic button placement. Simply check the checkbox for add buttons and it will take you to the add buttons step before proceeding with exporting the models or designing the printable liners or designing the liner trim curve. At this point, I'm going to just go to export models only so I could show that we've added to the export step the ability to export the video with different options of how the video should be created, um, both draws separately, both draws in a byte. You could put in custom text and other options that we have here. We've added this on the export step. So if you've added buttons, then you could export the video um, with the buttons or if you're reopening a case to create that video, then you can just go to the export step and you could create the video for export as well directly from the export step.